morning let's see how this one goes uh with today's topic yet again here i am i think this is going to work so we'll just give this one a crack and see how we go here so thank you for your patience um yep looks like this one's working thanks for joining me debs cooper global stressologist which is funny because i've just done a facebook live and it uh jumped me out so and it was about i'm the cranky one what do i do so clearly that was a perfect example of seeing how i could handle cranky which i'll leave for a few minutes and then i'll get rid of it so I'd love to know if you're on this video. Uh, give me an emoji, a like, a love. I'd love to know if you're live or if you are replaying and where you are in the world. That's pretty exciting. So, Debs Cooper, global stressologist, currently in sunny, sunny Cromwell, central Otago, uh, 30 minutes from Queenstown for those who don't know where I am. So, let me talk about I'm the cranky one, what do I do? This one came about as a part two from last week because I talked about what to do when you're around people who are cranky and quite a few people private messaged me and said, I'm cranky, what do I do? I'm cranky, I'm the cranky one, I really don't like it. So this is where this uh, Facebook Live came about. So first let me talk about what is cranky. Cranky is when you are agitated, frustrated, peeved off, uh, annoyed with everything and everyone around you. And I talk about wanting to kick the dog, and when I talk about not that we're kicking any dogs, but we actually want to kick and blame people and point the finger at everyone around us rather than taking on our own stuff. So this is what the kicking the dog actually means. So it's when you have, when you're cranky, you have uh, physical emotions and not only physical emotions, anything physical like you get headaches and you get heavy and you're stomping and your shoulders are down and you're, oh God, you know, you know the ones where you're repeating that story over and over again and you're repeating that story necessarily to bring in other people's support to go, yes, you're right, that shouldn't happen to you. Uh, which it could be also seen as when you're playing victim. Right now we are in New Zealand and we've had over 100 days of no COVID cases in the community and we've just broken uh, out of that and we've got a handful, just over 10, uh, 10 for those people who don't understand my accent now and so it's making people cranky where I'm in central Otago we've got no community cases but I'm going back to the area where there is uh, in a few days so it's interesting to see the angst and the crankiness of people that is building up even though we have nothing here in uh, central Otago people are still starting to get cranky with the government with people around uh, with the health department, with a lot of things that are um, in and out of their control. So let's, I've got some steps here, I've got seven steps to help you to get through that I'm cranky, you know those ones. So step one, look at the why. But even though I say look at the why, don't look right now. Because when you're in that cranky mode, you're not going to see anything but more and more crankiness. So people are already walking on eggshells around you, so there's no point in you looking at, why is this happening to me? Why, why, why? Because you're not even going to get a look in of anything. So don't even bother looking at the why right now. You are going to do it, you're going to be aware you're going to do it, but don't do it right now. So <clears throat> step two is get away from everyone. So when I say get away from everyone, I'm talking about get away from your family, get away from your work colleagues, get away from your children, get away from the animals, get away from everyone around you. Now when I say that, it's because it's like glitter. If you are cranky and you uh, put that energy onto someone else, they may take that energy on, unless they're strong enough to actually not take it on and they've watched my Facebook uh, live from last week but they will take it on and then they become cranky and it is like glitter that just gets spread and spread and spread so it's wise for you just to get away from everyone just as a temporary measure 
Now, I'm not talking about get away for a week, take a holiday, go somewhere for a week, go sit in the garage for a week, any of that sort of stuff. You know, if you just need to get away from someone for a minute or get away from somebody for five minutes or just get away from everything, get away from your phone, get away from social media, get away from everything and everyone for a short amount of time. But you have to tell them. You have to tell them that you're going away. So if you're at work, you can't just walk away from your desk. Just let your colleagues know. Just say, hey, I'm just popping away. I'll be back. I'm leaving my phone here. I'll be back shortly. Uh, if anyone wants me, just get them to write down what it is, and I'll address it when I come back. Get away and tell people, because there's nothing worse than people are going, where is so-and-so, where is so-and-so, where is so-and-so? And you finally come back and they go, oh, so-and-so is looking for you. And then you're going to start feeling bad that you had to take some time out. When you put a time frame on this, don't put an unrealistic time frame. Don't say, I'll be back in a minute, because you're not. You know, even though I say to my dog, if I pop out, I won't be long. He doesn't know what long is. He actually doesn't even know what I'm saying, I think, half the time. Um, so don't say, I'll be back in 10 minutes, if you're not going to be back in 10 minutes. So just say, I won't be long, or whatever phrase that you like to use, um, just get them to write it down. I don't know how long I'm going to be. I'll be under an hour. Or I'm going to just pop away. I'll be a couple of hours. I'm going to the supermarket, even if you're not going. Or any of those things. So just take that time out and get away from everyone. When the next one, number three, is joy. And when I talk about joy, I talk about... Uh, whatever brings you joy, whatever sparks you up, whatever lights you up, whatever gives you that ah, epivescent whatever it is. So if it's a drink, if it's a drink and you like to drink something, drink more of it. If it's uh, food, if it's a food you like to eat, then drink more of it. Uh, for me, I know when I'm cranky, I do reach for my favorite potato chips. But I know that's not going to help me in the long run. But I still do it. It's okay to reach for those, but not reach for those. But if you can keep away from the unhealthy stuff, would help your crankiness down the track. So find whatever gives you that joy, if it's food or drink or, or whatever. Um, for me, the smells. I'm a real smell kind of person. I love perfumes and I love candles that smell and I love glorious smells around me. So they bring me joy. Um, I know if I walk past somebody in the street and they smell nice, it just gives me a little spark in my day. And it takes me out of that crankiness. If you like um, certain smells, smell it. Spray it. Get it out there around you, whatever it is. Uh, what else brings you joy is your surroundings. Be aware of your surroundings and ensure that they're a, a joyful place. Uh, if you have a lot of clutter around, don't go into a room that has a lot of clutter because that's not going to get you joy. It's going to make you cranky and heavier on your shoulders and frustrated again that there's so much to be done and you're not getting it done. Uh, music. So when I talk about music uh, for joy, uh, there's different levels of music. There's, you know, the sing-along that you want to sing and dance to. There's the rocking music, there's the meditation music, there's the calming, whatever gives you joy, if you just feel like cranking up that stereo and singing and dancing, for goodness sake do it, do whatever brings you joy at that moment. What's important with the joy is not to go to people, not run to people, because when you run to people, you're just going to repeat that story over and over and over again. And you're trying to bring those people in for your, and then this happened, and then this happened, and this happened, and so-and-so said this. And it's not going to help that other person. Remember the glitter to glitter? It's not going to help the other person. So the only person, if you do need to reach out, is, that would be me, Debs Cooper. Because I can help you with this. Even if it's just a, a message, just a text or anything like that, whatever it is. But there's nothing worse than being that person that that friend connects with all the time and they just moan, moan, moan. Because they will suddenly wipe you out when it comes to that point. So ensure that you have that joy around you. Once you've found that joy and you're sitting in your space that's lovely around you, look at the why. 
And it's only then, remember I said number one was look at the why, but not straight away. Now you can look at the why because you're sitting in a space that's yours. It's your own breathing that's helping you that you can hear. What breathing is that? So sit at the why. And when I talk about the why, it's important to look at certain things. So we look at our past triggers. What has brought me to this? Has this brought something up that someone has said or done previously that I haven't resolved? Is it because last night I was sleep deprived? I've had a rough sleep and, and I'm cranky. I've woken up cranky. Is it because I ate a lot of junk yesterday and now and I didn't go and do any exercise? Is it because uh, I've ran out of hot water and couldn't have my shower? What What is the why that has got you to that cranky point? Is it because my head is so full of chaos that I have so much to do and there's not enough time in the day? It's really important to look at the why of why you're sitting in this situation. Because if you don't look at the why, it's just going to build up and build up and build up. And, you know, as I, as I think about this, I talk about you're going to get more and more glitter all over you. So it's important to look at the why, but like I said at the start, not straight away. Okay, so once you've got your why, it's important to look at why this has gone on and how it's actually helping you. So by doing this, we look at what is the benefit to you and others who have been affected by your crankiness of this going on. What is the benefit to you and others who it is affected of what's going on? So when I think about this, uh, the benefit to you is things like, how is this uh, uplifting my life? How is this helping me? How is this uh, giving me more insights into things? So this week, uh, which is actually quite funny because as the first Facebook Live didn't go because I had uh, computer issues. I have to giggle because I wrote down an example of when I was cranky. And I've had moments of crankiness the last few weeks. Clearly, you know, we're not all perfect, just so you know. It does come about. But it's how short a time you sit in that crankiness is actually the key. So I was a bit frustrated because my office was in chaos and my computers weren't linking and this wasn't linking to that and the phones weren't linking and I just, the internet wasn't working at one stage and everything, and it was just like, argh, I was getting incredibly frustrated, cranky. Blah, 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 blah. You know the ones when that story just repeats and repeats and repeats and that's where I felt like. So once I got my own space and, space and got my breathing under control and found an area that I could sit and ponder on this and deal with it, I could then unpack it. So what I did was I wrote down the things that were working for me that I learned from this chaotic moment. And I've just got a few here that I've written down here that came to mind. So I really got clear on my workload. Uh, I looked at my workload and went, is this realistic? Is this really realistic for what you have in front of you right now? I redid all my time frames. I looked and went, okay, you said you were going to do this by Wednesday. It's now Tuesday night. You're not going to get it done, are you? Because you would like to sleep tonight. You're not going to put five hours into something when you're not going to have that right energy. So I redid my time frames. I told people of the new time frames who I had in my team who were helping me with certain things. So I told them of the time frames and asked them if that suited them. So if it doesn't suit them, then I'm going to have to do something else. So I told people of their, their time frames. I then delegated a lot more on my plate that was hanging over my head. And uh, one of the beautiful things is I found somebody who, well, all going well, is coming next week to actually resolve 90% of my long list of 18 computer issues that I'm having currently right now. So I've got trust and belief that this person's going to resolve this. If they don't, I'm just going to find someone else. It's totally okay. But I learned to delegate. And this is number six is learn to delegate and ask for help because there's nothing worse 
that then you're sitting in that space and you're frustrated with what's going on and you don't feel like you can delegate. Uh, if you feel you're a failure by not getting it done, whoop de do it's just a story that you're creating yourself. It's actually a genius idea right here, right now for you to look at it and deal with it that you can move on and achieve it some other way or get someone else to do it who's going to put their own energy into it. So delegating and ask for help. And I just really would like to reiterate, it isn't a failure when you ask for help. It's actually a genius idea that allows you to keep functioning. Okay? Number seven. The very last one of this, number seven, is appreciate yourself for the situation you are in. Appreciate that you've had that glitter spread all over you and that you're in this situation and look at what's going on for you. So appreciate the situation, be grateful for it, move on, don't sit in your poop, get moving, take action. So that's what happens if you're cranky. It's a pretty simple seven step process. The key is to do the steps. Now, if you can only do one or two of them, so be it. Just do one or two. But the seven steps are actually uh, achievable, easy, they're not hard to do. But if you find them a challenge because you are sitting in that cranky state, then please reach out. Don't sit in that space and get more and more cranky where people are walking on eggshells past you. So thank you very much, people. This is Debs Cooper signing off from Cromwell, Central Otago, New Zealand, where we have a beautiful sunny day and we are in the middle of uh, winter. So thanks for joining me. I will see you next week. I trust you appreciate these tips. Bye. If you end this video, yes.